Joe Muto. Did you talk to him about that? Might you talk to him about that, about handling that sort of? Yeah, I, I have not talked to Donnie about it, but congratulations to him because I saw that he, you know, he, he just went to work for the for the Blue Jays. But no, I mean, I, I think in this situation, you know, we're just focusing on what we're doing for next year, how we're building next year, and, and going off that. So had not thought at all about you know having conversation with Donnie about that. If he does come back, or if he doesn't, either way, are any outfield spots cemented for next year as far as who plays where, or is it? Still you guys can kind of a feeling out process of how the best fit is going to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as we've talked about throughout the the three years, here, versatility is really important. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still see Brian as a center fielder, and mm -hmm. you know, Brian will play center field. And the fact that we have other people that can play on the corners, that can go to center, I think that's it. That's extremely important, and we'll continue to to make sure we stay versatile. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think we have any cemented, and it does not shock me. Rob, that you asked a lineup question December the 6th. But, uh, but, <laughs> but you know, yeah, I mean, I think versatility is extremely important for us. But, but you know, we see Brian as the center fielder. What do you think of the two hitters you guys have added to the roster here? In yeah, really excited about, uh, about our additions and appreciate the fact that we were aggressive coming into the offseason in terms of we knew first base was a, a place that we needed to get better. And we added not only one, but we added two. And the fact that we're able to add Carlos into a situation where we have a ton of young Latin players, especially young Dominican players. And, and I mean, if any of you guys have, and I'm sure you've done, if you've done any homework on Carlos Santana, I mean, we're talking about an elite human being that we're bringing into our clubhouse that wanted to be in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was excited to be there. And, and then getting G-Man who, who can facilitate in so many roles, has the ability to hit. We have two guys that, that probably are gonna benefit as much as anybody in the game from the lack of shifting. So those were important things. And, and the fact that we were able to go out and, and probably take away one of our biggest needs early in the off season by, by getting the first baseman that we wanted, first base DH when we wanted, was really important. Speaking of young Dominican players, O'Neill Cruz is now playing in the Dominican Republic. What are the reports you've gotten and what he's been doing? Yeah, well, the reports I've gotten, we were fortunate. Donnie Kelly, our bench coach, uh, was just there. He was down and he spent, uh, he spent four days in uh, in uh, the Dominican was able to see O'Neill was able to see Rudy was able to see uh, Miguel Andujar and, and that was really important for us and Donnie was actually rapid texting me during the game about some of the things that O'Neill was doing so the reports have been really good you know I, I've seen some of the videos of him just actually working out it looks like he's on uh, a mission to be stronger and I know that's something that we've challenged him on and he's kind of challenged himself on but the reports have, have been really positive and you know we were fortunate not only are we getting good reports but we were able to have one of our coaches hands on down there to be able to see it. So you talk about getting stronger what, what is there anything else that you're looking for him specifically this winter what he's doing there? Well I think the biggest thing is consistency and we talk throughout the the end of the off season is just you know, the pitches he swings at, the pitches he doesn't swing at, we were able to see that uh, improve in September, which is, number one, challenging to do at the major league level, but it's also encouraging with the fact that we know how much better he wants to get. So those are the things. And then, you know, defensively with his footwork, we're talking about an NBA player that plays shortstop. And at times, you know, even though the, the arm is, is extremely prolific, his feet wouldn't get underneath him and he would have to, you know, he would have to maneuver the ball, and we just need to make sure that he gets his feet underneath him a little bit better. Will you guys play at all with him in the outfield, or would you rather him concentrate all of his efforts at short? In winter ball? Winter ball, spring training, any time? Yeah, What's I think. the timeline on introducing that again? Right now, I think we, you know, we see him as a shortstop. You know, I, I wouldn't totally dismiss him going to the outfield at some point in spring training. I mean, I think I told him at one point I was going to play him, Rudy, and Marcano in the outfield one day as a joke, and he, they were all three so excited about it, I may have to do it just to, <laughs> to make him happy. But uh, overall, we see, we, we see O'Neill as a shortstop. You talked about um, Brian's particular style of leadership, how he's very much someone who leads by example, kind of given how this situation kind of unfolded. Is there any concern that things might be a little odd coming into spring training if he's still in the requirements? No, I don't. I don't. I don't uh, think that anything is going to affect the way Brian Reynolds is as a player, as a way he is as a clubhouse. He's, he's such a, a good human being that, that, that I don't think any of this stuff will, uh, will affect our clubhouse at all. Do you, well, you're also going to be bringing up a lot of rookies next year, and this is someone that they're going to be looking forward to. Do you feel like even if he is the same Brian Reynolds and there isn't a change there, just the fact that this was out in the open? 
does that maybe have an impact? Well, I, I think the impact in our clubhouse will be that Brian will continue to be the person he is. So d don't think that, that that will have any impact on our clubhouse. And with our young players, I think coming to the big leagues is just immersing themselves in the big leagues and immersing them. And I want our young players to watch how Brian Reynolds plays. You know, and I think we've said this time and time again that if we get everyone to play, you know, with uh, with the aggressiveness in, in the effort that he plays, we're in really good shape because of how he exemplifies that. So do not expect that to be any any of an issue. How much have you seen of Andy Rodriguez as a former catcher yourself? What do you think? <laughs> He's really good. Uh, no, I'm excited. I mean, I think Indy's, you know, when Ben Charrington came in, we talked about identifying, we talked about deploying, we talked about developing. This kind of fits in all those. We were able to identify a player and get them. We were able to develop them in our own system. We're talking about a player that was in the DSL. Uh, and, you know, now we're going to get a chance to deploy him at some point, which the ability to catch, the ability to play second base, the ability to play the corner outfields, we're talking about a rare athlete. And he just continues to get better as he climbs level to level. Is there still development? Yes. But are we excited that Indy Rodriguez is a pirate? 100%. And I think he just fits into this good group of young players we have that Pirates players are going to be excited about. Do you envision him being a 120 game year catcher? Or do you envision him being a blue bounce? Yeah, I, I don't know yet. I think that's something we'll find out the more he catches. I mean, this is a kid that's played, what, 40 games above the A ball level. And you know, as excited as we get about things, we also have to temper that and, and let him get into a situation in, in Indianapolis this year and let him play and, and kind of work off that. Shelby, with Santana and Choi, do you have one that you prefer over the other defensively? I know you haven't put eyes on them. They're not, you, they haven't played yet. But right. I mean, do you go into it with somebody thinking they're more of a defensive guy? No, no no preconceived notion on it. I think, to, to our point, we'll get in and get him in camp. And then the other thing, and Carlos and I talked about it, we have to just make sure we monitor his body. You know, we are talking about a guy that's 36 years old and, and has logged as many games as anybody in baseball or in the top three or four over the last uh, few years, so we have to do that. You know, it's going to be interesting once we get uh, once we get G-Man in to talk to him. Now he's going to be in a situation he's not on the turf as he was in, uh, in Tampa and kind of work off that. So it'll be more conversational or relationship things as we get into camp. You mentioned the, the shift and how that might uh, impact Troy. Santana, there's a Well, I think the one thing for the Pirates that, that's a positive is, is the fact that we've had a lot of players that have played under these because we're so young. So we actually have a, a guideline or a template because of the fact that they have played games, especially for the pitchers with, with, the, with the pitch clock. And then the other thing is, is, I mean, as you guys saw in September, we have some really athletic guys. And the rule changes are based to make the game more athletic, to make the game flow. So we need to try to figure out how we can take advantage of that to, to be able to score more runs. Do you anticipate maybe your role or maybe how you approach being a little different this year whenever the past couple of years we've had to talk about like front office you know, development here and you know getting guys like in the majors. And this year, you're actually going to have them up here. Does that maybe change some things? Well, with those two guys specifically, I mean, they're going to start in the minor leagues, but I think we are seeing, we're seeing a, a larger chunk of that core group of development guys that are in the big leagues now, which is really, which is really important for us. And, and like we talked about last year, the difference between AAA and the big, big leagues is probably the biggest it's ever been. We were fortunate enough that we were able to get a lot of reps for those guys at the major league level this year. And I think we just need to continue to build off that to get better. But the other portion of this is it's an exciting group of players. I mean, they do things that uh, a lot of young players can't. So that that should, you know, provide for uh, provide for a lot of entertainment. Bay is his primary position outfield at this point. Like I think about Cruz at short, and they got young guys who have a second. Like is that where you guys would like to see him maybe set down roots? I don't think we were we've had a place where Bay's going to set down roots. You know, we feel he can play second. We feel he can play short. I mean, I played him at one game in, in center late in the uh, late in the season just to do it. Just we had talked about doing it. But we feel that his versatility is something that's really important. And we were continuing to build off that, depending on how we're going to build lineups, which Rob will probably ask another lineup question here in a second. But d depending on how we build our lineups, the flexibility to be able to move him. I mean, if you look at our lineup, I think there's one guy that, that probably plays one primary position. And he actually played short a little bit last year. But other than that, these guys have the, the ability to bounce around.
Well, here's a lineup question for you then. How do you look at the D? You mentioned before with Santana, like giving him some downtime to keep him healthy. Do you look at DH as kind of like a half day off, or is that a, you know what I mean? If you need to give a guy, some, get him off his feet a little bit, maybe is DH an option, or or if he's down, is Santana's down? Is he just like down? No, I, I think the DH. I don't know if it's a half day off. It's more how they prepare going into the day, what what they do that day, what they do the night before. You know, one of the things that Carlos and I talked about in. And we try to do with all of our guys is let them know the night before, you know, if they're going to be in the lineup. So the conversations that we will have just to make sure that that you know he knows how to prepare going into it. Mm -hmm. As a young athletic team that needs to score more runs, with the rule changes, do you see yourself being more aggressive, you know, more slow bases, really pushing the envelope more? Yeah, I, I would hope so. I would hope that would be, be we would use our skill set. You know, we've talked at times in, in baseball about how. You to your skill set, and we see other sports specifically does a, a much better job of that. But because of the fact we are young, athletic, and and we have had players that have played within this system, I would hope that would be you know the way we trend towards during the season. I talked to a few days ago with Baker about something related to that. He talked about how it's you kind of develop ways to score one run now. That that's an important thing in the, in the, in the system. And you see Altoona stealing a, like 160 bases or whatever it is. How does that fit? With, is, is that your style of game? Is, is that kind of like what you've been waiting to kind of implement in a lot of ways? I, I think your style or the manager style of game is built on your personnel. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we've done a good job uh, in the minor leagues looking at what And then Bake has kind of deployed his staff to make sure that we're – you know, we're using that skill set. And like you said, in Altoona, we were able to do that. Now, Altoona also had some specific rule changes that were different that allowed that, which is fine because that allows us to to talk. And we had Kyron with us late in the year. I think you guys remember. And one of the main reasons Kyron was with us was for him to sit down with Donnie and I and to walk through, like, how he managed the game and what he used because we don't have – the ability to do that because we haven't run the game that way. So there, there's certain factors, but I do really appreciate that in, that in uh, you know player development in the minor leagues, Bake has has kind of outlined with conversations with the major league staff of you know hey what should we do, how should we use it, and then some of it just comes down to you know what your players are. If we have a bunch of guys that just stand in a box and try to hit homers, you're not going to be able to steal 160 bases there. We had a really athletic group there, and I think the other thing that would that we've talked about is not only making good base stealers but good base runners to try to tr try to create that, you know, first to third, second to home mm -hmm. type uh, type atmosphere. Mitch Keller took a nice step forward last year. What are you looking for now? You know, the next step the Consistency. You know, I mean, I think the one thing we've talked about with Mitch was he was a prospect for a long time. And sometimes when prospects come to the big leagues, you automatically expect them to be the guy you want them to be. And it takes time. And we saw Mitch go through that process. Uh, and I think it was very humbling for him to go through that process. But it also made him work really hard. We got about a third of the way through the season this year. We identified some things in terms of not only with his delivery, but with his pitch mix that we could go to. I and mean, we saw a lot of consistency in what he was. The next step is continue to build off that consistency. The one place, and I, and I think I said at the end of the year, I was more proud of Mitch than any player I've ever been around, is every time he took the mound, he believed he was the best pitcher you know, in the game. And I think that's something we have to let him continue to grow and that confidence, and that's really important. Tony, uh, Troy said that he didn't think the elbow surgery was going to be a, a very big deal. He really downplayed it. Are the reports good so far on, on his rehab? Yeah, his rehab has gone good. We were happy with how the how the surgery came out uh, and just text messaging with him. He feels like he's in good shape, doesn't feel like he's going to be behind at all. It'll be, you know, once he gets into the States and we're able to get eyes on him and get him into camp, you know, we'll be aware of it. But, uh, you know, from, from the conversations I've had with him, he feels really good about it. Maybe that's good. Uh, well, why there's so much turnover is because, you know, one of the easiest things to do is just to blame the hitting coach. And the, the reason it's hard is because anybody that's ever picked up a bat thinks they can be a hitting coach. And, and because of that, everybody has an opinion on it. And the, the building and establishing, the establishing and then the maintaining of relationships with a game that's based on failure is extremely hard. And that's why you see places 
where the longevity of the hitting coach and the consistency of the hitting coach keeps getting extended is because number one, they're able to maintain, but they're also able to change. And the game has changed. I mean, five years ago, six years ago, when I was a hitting coach, you didn't have to be a movement specialist. Now you have to be some sort of movement specialist, or you have to have someone on your staff that's a movement specialist, and you have to be able to, to let them have conversations about what, what hitters are doing. And then I also think hitters know a lot more about what their body is and what the angles are and the, the things that we can measure. And uh, so it's a, challenge, it's a challenging thing. And you know, we, I think we're really fortunate with, that we have Andy Haynes, and, and it's really easy to, to critique guys. But the fact that we, we're going to maintain consistency is really important. How do you like to interact with guys who have their you know, pride and strength off the outside? Has that dynamic changed? That dynamic has changed. I think a lot, uh, years ago, and I can speak from experience, you were extremely sensitive that there was almost like it was an indictment that, that you didn't have the information to provide. But it's become such a norm now. And I think it's one of Andy's strengths that he builds relationships with, with those external guys. And you know, we learn about what they're teaching because ultimately it's about the player. And if the player is in a good position and understands what they're doing, then we're going to get the best for them. Thanks. Thanks, See you guys. Thanks, Joe.